So we're at the swap meet. We're gonna get some lychee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it looks good. Huh? Well, get the ones with the twigs. You want some Okay. Anything else that you want? Nine. 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 No, I think we're good. So we're in Haya. We're on Baldwin Avenue right now, going down to find the Nourish Health Bar. Health Bar and Cafe. Do you want to go to the other hidden place? The, uh, you want coffee the there? The coffee first? place, yeah. So we're going to go through San Lorenzo Bikinis. If you go straight through there, there's a little coffee shop That's hidden coffee. in the back. Log Rose. When's the last time you, you've been a while since you bought a bikini? Long time, yeah. This is a really cool shop. I like their stuff. So you just walk through San Lorenzo Bikinis and then it opens up in the back here. That's yeah, a cool little place back here. Yeah. How's their coffee? You've been here before. Yeah. Is it good? It's good. Alright guys, so we're just waiting for Michael's espresso and then we're gonna head out uh, to you. the Irish bar to see if they're open. I bet that's an old HCNS truck. Well, we Hi. The gas station. Yeah, it's so weird how Paya has changed over the years. I mean, man, back when, I don't know, like 16 years ago when I first came out here, it was just totally different. Yeah, well, that place that's now Paya Inn, I think you've mentioned it on the video before. Eco friendly seashells. <laughs> for this place. So here's Mesh Yoga, but they're somewhere around here. 161C. Okay, there they are. It's gonna be like a dentist where you can watch it, see how it's going, and it's gonna subtle. Oh, look at that. Nitro coffee, Nitro. and then I got a, a matcha latte. Matcha latte, with almond milk, spirulina. <sighs> got a discount too. Yeah. Dollar coupon. Yeah. So she gave us a couple more coupons. So that's awesome. I like all the white natural. It's really pretty. And then I want to cross here. Okay. And see if John the artist is in Charlie's. Foods. Michael's looking for cookies. Yeah. We found the Uncle Eddie's yeah. vegan cookies. With Chocolate chip, walnuts. <clears throat> this is my diet food here. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a little oh, treat. Your tea, you said. Yeah, I'm gonna check out the tea. Um, there's one that I ran out of, the Moringa tea. I really like that one a lot and it's so good for you. It also has B12 in it, I believe. This one here. So if you feel like you need a little extra B12 in your diet, this might be an option for you. But anyway, I love the flavor of this one. It makes a really good iced tea. So definitely gonna get that one. I'm also gonna get this coconut aminos, the teriyaki sauce from Coconut Secrets. It's really good. 
like using that on like doing the vegan steaks, like the mushrooms. Oh, I gotta make tamales today too. Okay, oh yeah, oh. we gotta make tamales for sure. the diet in town though. We've got Dinosaur and her babies, and then do any of you guys remember Mamba? She has her little babies here, they're all, don't, hey, don't be stepping on my succulents, come on now. Okay, she's got seven of them. And then who do we have over here? What are you doing? That one out there is Dinosaur's other baby, like old baby. Now it's an adult. Oh my goodness, they're flying up here. What am I gonna do with you babies? Come on now, you're gonna get me in trouble. Don't make any messes. If Michael comes home and sees messes in the carport, you're gonna be mad. Yeah, let me feed you out in the grass. That would be better. Let's look at Dinosaur and her babies in here. <laughs> All right, first I gotta hang my laundry because I've got, what are you doing? Come on now, don't be making any messes at my laundry rack. Got my laundry rack set up over here and there's chickens under it. Be good. Oh no, did I wash it with a Kleenex? Oh god, I hate when that happens. I hope I didn't have Kleenex in my pocket. Okay, I'll see you guys in just a bit. Okay, listen now, chicky babies. I'm gonna have to weed eat over there. You're gonna have to move out for a little while. Okay, so I think I found all the parts for the weed eater. Let me try to put this together. So I think this this has an arrow so that pops into there I guess. Let's see. There we go. There you go. Move to the other side. Yeah, move over to the side yard. The only thing I couldn't find was the safety glasses. I don't know where Michael is hiding those. Maybe he has all the pairs with him. I don't know, but I'm gonna have to wear my sunglasses. So these will have to do. There's a couple of butterflies mating in the middle of the yard right now, so we're just gonna wait until they finish and then I'll go ahead and weed eat. Oh my God. So this area also I've got to clean out. Um, so right behind my little nursery here, this is all the like my propagating station for the succulents for like resale. So yeah, see a little bit shorter. Now the chickens can at least walk through it without you know getting like poked in their underbelly fluff. And then on this side behind the succulents, that's cleaned out now. So I still have this pot that I just have to finish cleaning out, put the pots away, um, take the weeds to the compost pile. And we actually are gonna be selling some of the succulents tomorrow. So I have some customers that, um, well, there's one that does weddings. And so she's been buying succulents from me for like wedding bouquets and stuff. So that's what kind of like what I'm propagating there. So I'm gonna finish cleaning out this pot. Um, I'm gonna prep the succulents for tomorrow's pickup. And I think that's all. I think we're looking good out here. And then some of the pots up here, I'm gonna have to separate because some of them have like five or six succulents growing in there. Sometimes I'll, you know, put multiples in a pot when they're first starting out as babies. And then I'll separate them out when they get a little bit older. So these guys are ready to get separated into their own pot. And I have some pots up here and some extra trays ready and waiting for them. So that'll be a project I'll probably have to do. Um, I don't know if I can start on this this afternoon, but maybe this weekend and get those ready because I'm gonna have customers that are gonna be wanting those. So that's the plan for those. And those are all probably gonna end up getting sold for wedding bouquets or something. Um, and then all of these, look at these little babies on this cow and coat. You probably won't be able to see the roots, but these, all of these on the tips of its leaves are little babies. And so those are gonna drop off 
and then they'll root. And so I think this is called like Mother of Thousands or something like that. But yeah, that's a really cool cowling koi. I like that one a lot. So got to work on those, prep them for weddings, and I think I think that's all for out here, you guys. At least in the backyard here. All right guys, our Southwestern vegan breakfast tacos are just about up here. Got everything cooked and ready to go. Michael should be here any minute. So I've got all the shells in there. And then we have black beans for the filling and then the tofu cooked scrambled egg style because these are breakfast, Southwestern breakfast tacos. And then we have onions, olives, jalapenos, tomatoes, cilantro, avocado. I also have some sour cream over here, vegan sour cream, of course. So yeah, I do like my vegan sour cream. It's not low fat or anything, but I don't really care. I'm not like low fat vegan. I'm not like any particular, you know, type of vegan. I don't try to eat any certain way other than just, you know, whole plant foods as much as possible. Um, but yeah, you know, 90% of the time, whole plant foods, you know, a little bit of something, something, the other 10% of the time I'm okay with. And I do have the nutritional yeast here in case I wanna add any more to my tacos. But I'm just gonna go ahead and start making up a plate here because I don't know if I can wait for Michael. So I was gonna show you guys, my little cactus is just about to bloom. Look at that hot pink bud on it. Uh, it's gonna be a pretty one. They did. They just put that roofing on without putting plywood down. Oh. <laughs> See this back here, you guys? This is, oh, hopefully it's not too windy. Hopefully you can hear me. But that is the barnyard. That's where the chickens actually live, the feral chickens. <laughs> But someone just bought that house and they're renovating it, you know, completely redoing it and now the chickens have been kicked out, so... It's sad. I, I don't they, know. They didn't cut their trees down where they roosted. No, the mango trees. no, they can still live in the tree. They live in the mango tree that's in their yard. So you guys had asked, what are we going to do with the chickens when we move? And, um, well, you know, they're feral chickens, so they're wild chickens, so they're not actually like they're out all over the entire neighborhood and town here. Like there's a park down here. So this park they hang out in a lot. So, you know, they're not really like in kind of like our control since they're just sort of like wild and running through the neighborhood. Out in the dry pool. Oh yeah, I didn't get to film that. I didn't have my camera with me, but Michael had to rescue a little baby chick. It was actually the dinosaur's chick, right? When they were younger. So there's a park up here on the corner. That's where they hang out too. So at this park back here, there's an empty swimming pool and uh, there was a chick, the dinosaur, likes to hang out in the park up here. So when she had her babies when they were younger, and it was a little tiny thing, it had somehow got through the fence and fell into the empty pool. So it was just like in that concrete and it was stuck down there and couldn't get out. And Michael, would you see him when you were driving home from work or something? Yeah, I saw the dinosaur jumping up. I could tell it was stressed out about something. And I figured that one of its chicks and jumped down into the dry pool. And that was what had it happen. So Michael came home and got me and then we went up there. He jumped the fence and rescued the baby yeah. chick out of the pool. Let's we'll see if you can see the Dinosaur DJ coming. Dinosaur was so happy. Yeah, I'm gonna walk and get bag coffee. And, and we're here in Wailuku Town right yeah, now. Yeah, I was gonna get one coffee for the, for the walk. You know, it's about a half a mile. You can tell someone is really into coffee here. Yes. He's got to buy coffee for the walk get down coffee, to go get, get coffee. coffee. Michael's taking a picture of his favorite bridge on Maui. I guess it's Art Deco. He's really into the Art Deco look. Yeah, like Is that what you call it? Art Deco? Art Deco? Yeah, 1936, I think. If you build your own house, are you going to do like an Art Deco sort of style on any part of it? Uh, I'd like it to be more, uh, a little more modernistic than traditional style architecture, I think. Uh-huh. Like Adobe? Would you live in an Adobe style? Uh, it'd be a modern take of Adobe. Okay, so we could do like modern minimalist Adobe. Yeah. Because Adobe, you know, the kind of the concept, but more like, I think, more angular instead of like kind of lumpy and uh, uh -huh. Make it like deadline straight. Is it just now eight o'clock? It is. We have clear hall. Eight o five. Eight o five. Look how high the sun is already. Oh. 
it is cooking. But yeah, Haleakala is nice and clear this morning. I bet it was a good sunrise up there. Okay, we just got to Safeway and we're gonna go get Michael's coffee. Poor thing didn't get, a, get his coffee in Wailuku because they were closed still. What kind of coffee did you pick out? Uh, I usually get the dark roast. This one's is a dark cocoa. Oh, Should I get the old coast? Stout and refined. What's he getting? Espresso roast. Okay. Rich and caramelly. And you're not gonna get the other one then? Nah, maybe next one. Okay. No, I gotta go home. I haven't eaten yet this morning. I'm gonna go home, make a smoothie, have a big bowl of fruit. Okay. What else? Cherries, big cherries. 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 I have lychee too. I might have some lychee. So, you know, like, there's all kinds of different ways you could look at it. And you know, I think with uh, something that I'm having to finally accept is this humility that my failures are actually learning experiences and getting you closer to an actual success, you know? It's like, I like that. Yeah, you tell, I mean, it's like business failures or any kind of you know, subjective failure, or re real failure, or, you know, you could beat yourself up, but you got, because everybody fails in one way or another. In fact, the most successful people, that's the common theme I'm learning, is that they've, they failed their way to success. It's somebody's quote, I don't remember who it is. I think there was a guy that was in, uh, I want to say it was IBM, one of his subordinates came to him and said, hey, how do I become more successful? And, he told the guy you got to double your failure rate to be successful. I think that what it comes down to is, I think it was uh, Jim Rohn, who's a motivational speaker. He asked the audience how many people think, how many tries they take before they quit. And you know, immediately you know the answer is most people don't even try once. They talk themselves out of it, or they'll listen to other people talk themselves out of it. Nobody knows your experience, right? Nobody knows what you've been through. That's so nobody right. knows what you know. And, or your ideas, right? But you can't translate any idea exactly as it is in your mind, or verbally or... Ah! Oh. Wow. <laughs> nice, peaceful Sunday morning. <laughs> Okay, so a few of you guys had asked to see a tour of our yard or, you know, just kind of meandering through and, you know, how I used to do in videos. There's not a whole lot going on in our yard right now, but we do have our big butterfly garden happening here. So this is the crown flower, the purple crown flower. So this feeds the caterpillars, it houses the chrysalises, and so let's see if we can find a chrysalis or at least a caterpillar. It might be hard to see, but there's a chrysalis right here. Can you see that? And then right up here, there's a little caterpillar right on there. Anyway, so that's what they're doing, hanging out on their big purple crown flower plant. Sometimes we have people come by because the flowers are used in lays, and so people will come by and ask to use the flowers. Can you guys see that tiny little caterpillar? Look at that baby, that is so sweet. My favorite part. Michael's favorite part of the yard is his compost pile. And I've kind of always been like, oh, well, you know, could we not put it in the front yard? Could it be in the side yard or something? Because, you know, it's like this big heap of pile, but oh, I don't know. That's how you generate you like soil. It. Okay. Soil. So, yeah, the banana trees have gotten huge. There's so many stalks in there now. So we have our Mexican Dorch sunflowers. The oh, butterflies the love these. We planted them one year, and then every year they continuously come back up. This one's all scraggly now, but there's still some flowers and the butterflies like to nectar on those. Oh yeah, more those seeds. seeds. So these are forever going to be growing in this yard now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Even after we move. We have an ice cream bean tree growing in this big pot here. So yeah, we're not doing too much in the yard anymore because, you know, we're going to be moving. So this is kind of just what it looks like out here. Um, my favorite part, actually, of like where I garden and stuff is just back here, all my succulents. Here's that cactus I showed you guys the bud yesterday. So that blooms so pretty. Isn't it weird looking though? How it's just like this little spiny cactus looking all plain and everything and then all of a sudden <laughs> it's got like that one little flower Oh, wow, that's out. really vibrant. The I way know. The sun's All right, we're gonna do a nice simple smoothie. So I'm gonna do some banana. Here. So we'll use one frozen banana. 
And then I have this mix. Um, it's organic antioxidant blend from Costco. So we've got like pomegranate in here, blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, cherries. It's really good. And coconut water. Oh, this one wasn't open yet. Oops. I just remembered I forgot to put the dates in. Okay, so we got three medjool dates, and I'm gonna add a little more coconut water too. 